Okay, so I'm going to do a quick end-to-end, -end, truly end-to-end, -end, including the slicer tutorial here today, so that you can have confidence in how to do Hueforge. So first, let me pull up an image. Just drag and drop it in. All right, and it's populated in here, and you'll see that it's in a black and white. Um, that's black and white is a color set that's already loaded. Uh, it's all PETG colors, but let's use PLA. Now, I've been testing out this PLA from a great brand called Kexeld, so I'm going to use that today. So we'll start by replacing the black. I just drag and drop it down. Now, this black's a little bit lighter than a normal black, but otherwise it's great. Let's replace the white with their natural, a very high TD natural color. Also great. Now we want to change the middle colors. Now, we could put in a yellow, put in maybe a brown, and see how well we can match the original image. And we can get pretty close. Um, it's not perfect, it's not exactly the same, it almost never will be. But let me show you why. Over here in the image format, I'll show you the luminance. This is the luminance map, and this is what is being used uh, for most of the modes to determine how high a particular part of the image is in the mesh. So the taller it is, the brighter it is here, the taller it's going to be here. So this is the you know a very tall section, and you can see it's very white here. Uh, now some colors will have the same luminance regardless of the fact that they're different colors. So two colors will have the same luminance, which is why sometimes you'll see some bleed over. And I still think we can make a pretty good image this way. We might add another color, might adjust things a little bit. Let's put in a darker brown as well. I have one here. Now here's one thing that's going to take your things to the next level. I bring in a default of 0 0.08 because that's about as low as people are generally comfortable with printing, but I personally use 0 0.04, and that's going to give you a lot more control over your blending and a lot more control over your layer heights to get exactly the look you want. So this looks pretty good, but I don't want you to feel trapped in the starting colors or in the image colors. One of the fun parts about Hueforge is to explore. So I'm going to replace this dark brown here with a dark green, um, maybe even bring it up a layer. Bring the, can I bring the black down? I could bring the black down a little bit. Now I'm going to get that halo effect up there, which I may or may not want. So maybe I want no halo, and I'm going to bring it all the way up here. This is kind of neat by itself, just the black, brown, or blue, or sorry, green, brown, yellow. But let's try with a lightish blue in here. Oh, that's kind of blown out. So let's try a darker blue. Let's try this peacock blue. Now notice I'm just dragging and dropping from the filament library into the sliders. That's how you populate the sliders. Um, Let's see if I increase. So it's a little bit of experimentation, and then we get this kind of almost um, mystical uh, magic kind of look here, which, which fits in with the motif. Um, and so this is how I'm going to choose to to print it. So I'm going to go to File, Save Project. Now you can export the STL, but if you save the project, all your settings from the previous from this attempt get saved as well. So I prefer to save the project. So I'm going to save the project. It's going to pop up an option. I'm going to name it um, uh, Spectral Stags Head. All right, now it's going to name that project. Now let's go into our slicer. I have Bamboo Studio ready here. We'll go to my directory where I saved and drag that STL in. Where is it? There it is. OK. Drag it in. Now they're big files, and I put this one at point two, so it's going to take a little while. Um, actually, let me show you a trick. One thing that I've had problems with is that Bamboo Studio sometimes hangs up on these prints. But I found a simple workaround is to come to your detail size here and go to 0.19. It does increase the mesh size just a little bit, but not very much. Save, save project again, and then we'll come back to Bamboo Studio, and we'll reload from disk. Okay, now it's been reloaded with the slightly higher resolution mesh. But for whatever reason, this fixes problems in um, in Bamboo Studio. Okay, so I'm doing a 0 0.04. Now here's a problem. I have a layer height of 0 0.04, but my first layer height is set to 0 0.24. And if you look at my Hueforge, you'll see that it's actually set to 0 0.16. Now there's two solutions. I can change it in the slicer, or I can change it here. I'm going to change it here and see what happens. No real difference. I think we're okay. Now, this is going to be a really thin print. It's 0.24 millimeters thick. That's pretty thin. So let's increase that 
to 3, 2. Now you see it got brighter. That's because I increased everything. I increased the depth by 0.08. So I'm going to increase the max depth by 0.08, increase the slider to the top, and then move everything up two sliders. There's layer height is layer height is 0 0.04, so I'm going to go up two sliders. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And you'll see that everything now has reverted and it basically looks exactly the same. So we'll save it one more time just to be sure. We have to save it. We changed the mesh over here, so we have to save it. So let's go back to Bamboo Studio. Reload from disk. Okay. Now, we have our layer height set to 0 0.4. We have our first layer height set to 0.24. We have, I have Classic on. Arachne can technically give you a better uh, mesh in the end, but I find that it slices faster with Classic. I do have wall loops to one, detect thin walls is on. I have monotonic and rectilinear for my infill and 100% infill, this is important. You want full infill so that your blending works correctly. Um, and then I have turned off detect narrow solid infill. I've turned off uh, ensure vertical shell thickness. This one setting can take a ton of extra slicing time and you don't need it for Hue Forge prints. Um, my speeds are standard. Um, I might reduce these a little bit, maybe make that 200, make the top surface 150. At these smaller layer heights, this can definitely cause an issue. I uncheck slow down for light overhangs. Again, there's no overhangs in a Hue Forge mesh, so don't put it in there. Support, no supports, no raft, um, and this doesn't matter. Others. I turn off the purge tower. If you want to use a purge tower, use a purge tower. If you want to use a draft shield to make sure that your priming is always different, do that. Um, some people don't like that you might have a little bit of the beginning of a layer isn't quite extruding until you get a little bit in. All right, so I'm going to slice it. This is going to take a little bit of time. I'll probably end up editing this out. Uh, I have a very beefy processor, and this still takes me quite a while to do. While I'm waiting, I'm going to bring up Hue Forge again. Now, it did save a, I'm going to bring up describe file. It saved a describe.txt file with, it's the name of the project, Spectral Staghead, describe.txt. You can see it here. These are the notes I'm going to use to fill my, to do everything. So you see it says start with black at layer 12, 0.68 millimeters, you swap to dark green. At layer 13, 0.72 millimeters, you start swap to peacock blue. At layer 16, 0.84 millimeters, swap to yellow. And at layer 22, 1.08 millimeters, you swap to the natural for the rest of the print. So I can't have this on the same screen, so I'm going to move it off. But this is how I'm going to, the directions I'm going to follow. And I have taken into account that the sliders are a little bit different. So this is at layer 12, you swap to dark green. Don't swap at 13, don't swap at 11, swap at 12. Okay, and we're back. That took quite a while, to be honest. Even on a very, very strong PC. Okay, so now we're gonna go and follow the directions. We want layer 12. So you see the slider here on the right? I'm gonna click around where I think 12 is, I'm not be exact. There's 12. I'm gonna right click on this, change filament. And I'm gonna reload my AMS. So, well, let's go ahead and do that now. Let's change this color to a dark green. Okay. And then we have a peacock blue. Okay. We have a yellow. And we have a white, that's correct. When you do that change, you do have to re-slice it, but this slice goes a lot faster. Now, if you do not have an AMS, you can. I'll show you how you can make this, or you do not have two AMS units, I'll show you how to do this. So, okay, so now I'm gonna change this filament to dark green. We have to slice it again. And again, you see we're starting at 80% here. It doesn't take that long to slice from here. Now, I do hope that at some point they'll let us do all these filament changes and then add a slice. Okay, so 12, then the next change is at 13, so one layer of green, of the dark green. Now we're going to change to that blue. Re-slice. Each time it should basically get faster and faster as you're higher up the stack. Uh, the next one is at 16. That was just a guess, but I got it. 
and then at 22. Now, I'm going to show you how different this looks. This is going to look very different from what Hue Forge predicted. And if it didn't, there would be no reason for Hue Forge. All right, let's get the last one in there. It's at 108, layer 22. It's probably about here. Oh, man, I got it right on the first try. Then to white. Slice that plate. Just about done. Okay. So this is what it looks like in the slicer now. And let me show you in Hue Forge, it looks like this, right? That looks totally different. You can come up here to this normal button and click it, and it'll show you what the slicer will look like. And that looks a whole lot more like the slicer. Now, my colors aren't exactly the same, but that looks a whole lot more like the slicer. So it should look pretty much exactly like the slicer. Um, you can also hold down the uh, mouse wheel, click and hold down the mouse wheel, and it'll do the same thing just briefly as long as the mouse wheel is held down. All right, so we've got this sliced, and uh, now all we have to do is print. Uh, now my, my printer is busy right now, I can't do this, but that's that's it, that's end to end. You hit print, and um, I'll, I'll print this in a little bit, and I'll post the results up at the end of the video. I forgot one more thing. I promised to show you how to print this with a 4 AMS unit. So come into print plate, and here we set these to their standard. Now, as I said, this hasn't been reloaded with my AMS unit, but you can change this one to A1. So we have five colors defined, and we just change this one to be to match as A1. Now these are my old colors in my AMS unit. And I'll change those before I print it, but um, A1. Two, three, A4, and then back to A1 here. Now, there's a trick you can do, is you can, once the print has started, you can pull the filament, just the filament out of the AMS unit that's in slot four, your fourth slot. And by doing that, what will happen is, you will, um, when it gets to that slot, it'll pause and wait for you to refill that filament. And when you refill that filament, you can also replace this roll here with the correct white roll. Um, and that way, and you can go all the way out to, to seven colors pretty easily that way, eight colors pretty easily that way. But um, obviously you'll have the same issue. You'll have to put, if you decide to go to eight colors, you will have to um, pull the filament in that's back in A3 again after it's all loaded and then replace uh, A4 before it goes. So anyway, that's how you can do this with a four, just a single AMS unit. Here's a quick bonus tip for you. I was loading up my AMS unit uh, my AMS. I have two. Um, let me adjust this to show you. I have two units on my printer, but I have another printer still printing. You might hear it a little bit in the video. And unfortunately, the white that I need, the natural, is in the other printer being waited, waiting to be used. But you can do the same trick. I can start, get all four of the starting colors, which I do have. In fact, I pulled the black that is done being printed out of the old, other printer pull the black out, put it in, put the other colors in. I can do the first four colors, and then the fifth color is not going to work because it's, I don't have the right color. But I can load it all, load a random spool of any filament in there, and then set all the, the um, AMS slots correctly, and then just pull that when the print starts. It doesn't pay attention to what's in there anymore once the print starts. And then once the natural is done in the other print, I can load it in, and if it gets to the, almost the end and then has to wait for the natural for a little bit, that's just fine. It'll just error out because there's not filament in that slot.